Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So welcome to church. For those that are visiting us, my name is Pastor Tim Wangi. I want to begin today by talking about uh, the battle. The battle. The battle. Mind battles. Mind battles. Mind battles. I have around uh, 45 minutes of a preacher. Tell your neighbor of a preacher is not the one on your watch. Uh, but this one will be good because uh, Pastor Rashid needs to have his... Um, uh, <laughs> Afternoon service. But Rashid, roho wa mungu wa kishuka. Tutayeka sadaka hapa na pesa yako hapa. Na yo mambo tumalise. Sini pesa unataka. Ata uite nini ni pesa. Unajua umeomba. Because he who finds. You find in prayer. Now you need money. Hallelujah. Amen. So those that are getting married, please let, let us not pray for them. They have prayed. Give them money. At this hour, their prayer item is. They already know this is the wife and this is the man. Iongumu imeisha. Give them money. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. When you're put on that WhatsApp group, don't be an intercessor. Now become a facilitator. Amen. That is done. Amen. And be ready for many weddings. Because these are young church. So I'm ready. I have around 17 messages. So I'm waiting for weddings. This one is a harus in Meziaka Mali archives. So Nikonaya Sikuya Rajid Yona Choma. So let's get to the topic of the day. Mind battles. Mind battles. Mind battle. The reason why I call these mind battles and not the battle of the mind is because the battle of the mind is one of the battles. There is the battle of the mind and the battle to the mind. Those are two different battles. Your mind can become a battlefield and the devil likes it that way. Your mind can become a battlefield. But let's begin with basic as we build up. The first thing we need to understand is that man is a triune being. Man is a triune. That name triune comes from the word trinity. And the name trinity is not in the Bible. It is a theological name that was coiled to try to explain the mystery of the Godhead. That he is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit at the same time. Yet he is still one. You can't explain that in grammar. That is spiritual language. It is a language in that realm. In our realm we can only coil a word and call it trinity. Are we together? So God, God is a triune entity. He is three in one. He is one that can be three. And he is three that is also one. Mystery. Now, man is also a triune being. You also exist in three facets. You have a body. You have a soul. And you have a spirit. So man exists in three facets. You have number one, body, number two, soul, number three, spirit. Now, out of biological studies, we have studied the body. It is called, in medical language, they call it the anatomy of the flesh. That is the first course you do when you go to nursing school or any good medical school. You study the body from head to toe. It is called the anatomy. You study the brains, you study the heart, you study the liver, the kidney. All these things we can see them. The intestines, the small, the big, the hand, the toe. So that's the body. Are we together? So that is the element we see. And because of the visibility of the body, man has invested a lot in the body. We buy designer clothes, designer perfumes. We try to put makeup, mascara, eyelashes, all these things just to make the body look good. But allow me to tell you, you are not your body. You are not the body. You are a spirit that lives in a body. So we have invested in the wrong entity. And we have been very loud towards the wrong entity. The real you is not the one I'm seeing here today. Tall, dark, and handsome. Those are the parameters of your description. But the real you is a spirit. The body is like a car that carries you. So I can never relate with you according to the size of your body. You can be big and useless and you can be small and useful. So it is not how big you are. You can be big and all you do is occupy space. Because you are matter, but there is no relevance of life. And you can be small, and the only thing you do is breathe oxygen and die. That cannot be your portion. And the world is very loud about physicality. 
This is where socialites find their career because it is the externality of some parameters for the lack of a better word. That is what they keep on showing us on social media. So some people have found a career on how they address their body. Jesus. Am I stepping on your toes? No, my man. It is a fact. People have gone to the gym to work on the body to get six packs. Biceps. And they don't know life is run by concepts. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> have you realized everyone is running in the morning? Because they are, they are aware of health. People are eating healthy. Listen, and I have no problem. Eat healthy. But let me tell you, your health cuts across. You need physical, you need a soulish and spiritual health for you to be healthy. You can be held physique, but you are dying of depression. You can be healthy even in the soul, but spiritually no relationship. So the body is a gadget that carries you. The body is what gives you legal ground to operate on earth. Without a body, you are illegal on earth. So this body is not me. This is a flesh and this flesh is that. Let's turn in the Bible now. Let's begin by Genesis 1 because I want to show and I might take time today just to show you that you're a body, soul and spirit and then we look at the components of the soul. Then next Sunday we begin the journey of the battles of the mind. Are we together? You need to know you. Hello? We don't deal with men according to the flesh. You could be tall, dark and handsome but you have a bad heart. Let's begin by Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. And we are not surgeons, but you have a bad heart. You are unapproachable. Some of you, the problem is not prayer. The reason why you are single is because it is not appearance. You are beautiful, but attitude, Jesus. Attitude. That one, you can't fix it by prayer. We must align the soul. You have face value. You know, I'm preparing for, we have a meeting with the Young adults, they fought. And I'm working on something. And yesterday I was meditating. You know there are things you meditate and say, that's a good one. And I discovered, this is, this is a leakage. I discovered, beauty is for attention. But when the heart is right, I will declare my intention. Seller, so, before I download that message. It is somewhere in my spiritual archives. Waiting for that day. So there are many people, all they do is attract. But no one has declared intention. Because beyond face value, there is no heart value. Okay. Some of you, after that message, you'll get married quickly. <laughs> it will be a solution. Then God said. So that's very important. In fact, we can begin from 26, 25 there. And, man, and God made the beast of the earth. Everybody read. Uh -huh. That's a very good area to begin. And God saw that it was good. That name good there means functional. So every animal was made according to its kind. Its kind. The beast of the, 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 beast, of, the beast of the earth to its kind. Cattle to its kind. But there was... The creator did not have his kind. So God created animals that carried their kind. And in the conclusion of creation, the creator wanted to also create something that has its kind. Now you'll understand 126. Who, who is there? Yes. Don't write notes as I preach. Then God said, let us make man in our some the original version. You see that name man there? It is not man human. It is mankind. That is the right rendering of that man. He said, let us make mankind a kind of us that is man. We have made cattle kind. We have made beast kind. But us in the God level, we don't have a kind of us. So he said, let us make a mankind. So when a man calls you mankind, that is the original name of creation. 
because you are a man but a kind of God. So that's why the concept of image it was the reflection and the and the and the manifestation of the nature of that kind. According to our likeness, attributes, character, because every animal gave according to its kind. So if a cow gave birth to another cow, it must have the likeness of a cow. It must have the head and the four legs. If a bird gave to its kind, it must have wings. So when God gave to his kind, there are things in God that must be new. Naturally by creation. Because you are a kind of God. That's why the psalmist writes and says, Don't ye know that ye are gods in small g? Because you are a kind of God. Ah, uh, okay. It looks very hard. I'm not blaspheming. I am preaching scripture. I know you are taught you are a nobody. Wewe unaishi kwa neema. Hata ukienda kutafuta Mungu, unamwambia baba sifai kuwa mbele yako. That is a level of preaching when we want you to be guilty of your sin. But there is a level you enter where you are not dealing with sin. You are now dealing with God as a saint. The problem is that the church is still as a sin level. So we cannot release saint mysteries. We must still release some, some doses of the flesh. Doses of flesh. Oh, fast. Achana na maboy. Achana. Those are flesh doses. There is a level you enter. I write to the saints. I write to the saints. That name saint means hagios. The holy ones. The set apart ones. These ones are not contaminated in the world. These ones are now in the radars of God. They can manifest God. Sainthood you don't achieve when you die. So that we come and say we have prayed through Anthony and our prayers are answered. And then we have a coronation day. That's for another religion. Here we are breathing living saints. Sanctified, justified, set apart. No appetite for the world going to heaven. Dealing and expressing the natures of our kind. Ha! Ah, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish. You can see the word them. And then let's go to 27. This is what this is the reason of your creation. Okay, just stay there. This is the reason of your creation. This is why God created man. The word there let us, the element of God in plural, plurality. In Hebrew, it is a description of a big being. So when Hebrew language, when they are writing in Hebrew, to talk about a big person, like the president, they might use the word plural. And they, and, and they came, but it's one man. Because they are describing a big entity. Hallelujah. So that one does not mean, many people used to say that, Mungu alika, mtoto wakaka, na rom dakatifu wakaka. Listen, God is one. There is only one God. There is only one God. And that's why I began by saying, you are a triune man. You have a spirit, a soul, and a body. You are not three people. So the moment you look at yourself, you carry a dimension of God of Trinity. And your members must work together. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. But there are times when your body needs to work when the spirit cannot work but there are times the spirit has to work and there are times your soul has to work it doesn't make you three uh, am i speaking to anyone so now so this is the essence of your life dominion over the fish of the sea over birds of the air over cattle this has nothing to tell you that now you need to be a fish farmer and chicken farmer and cow farmer that is not dominion that is what we call agriculture these are the spiritual terrains of operation. Where do birds operate from? The air. Where do fish operate from? The water. Where do cattle operate from? The ground. So you are given dominion over air, the, the water, and the ground. These are the demonic territories. And these are the territories you ought to have dominion. You have to have dominion in the airwaves. Have dominion on the ground. Have dominion under the marine power and the sea creature. Dominion, the word to dominate means they are not ruling and overruling you. It means they are under your authority and power. So if man does not have dominion, he is a failure according to creation. Okay. The book of Genesis is full of metaphor. If you understand English, metaphor. These are things that have hidden meaning. I bless God because of the time we are living men are at least people have read so now we can decode some heavy stuff you are not in the generation of my mother 
whereby they used to be told, Penda Maombi, Penda Maombi, Penda Maombi Ndugu, Penda Maombi Dada. Ambia jirani Penda Maombi, Maombi ni mzuri. Na kumbuka kuna wakati tulikuwa na muke wangu, tunamini kazi, tukaomba Jehova, akafungua mlango, sema Penda Maombi, Penda Maombi, sababu tano za kupenda Maombi, ya kwanza Maombi ni kuongea na mungu. Communication, sema communication. You know that's how our mothers were taught. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, where your mother liachia. Wewe sulienda mbele. So, misi takujaba kukwambia communication, mawasiliano, kwarane liyanagai. No, that's not your level. <laughs> Wewe uneza shika vitu katha deep. <laughs> Amen. So, we must journey and that's where your battles are deep. So, <laughs> Amen, I've remembered my village pastor. Hi. He will take 30 minutes to repeat the same thing. So God created man, singular, in his own image, in the image of God. He created him male and female. He created. Now go to 26. Let me tell you something. You see, the moment man does not have dominion, the moment you are not dominating, automatically it means something else is dominating you. The what we call depression is what I call deep oppression. Meaning that something has oppressed you and you are supposed to overrule it. So because your nature is not to be ruled but to rule. Now that you are under rulership, you are operating against your nature. And that's what men call depression. Deni mekukalia, but when do nafakukalia deni? House rent mekushukulikia, but when do nafakushukulikia? Then now something has taken over where you are supposed to take over and we shall come to that not from a mental awareness held weak what to bonge no we will come from scripture and begin to show you how man begins to dominate over matters that have dominated them because you are a tool of dominion hallelujah you are a tool of dominion so now look at 27 this is the man god created so the idea of god making man mankind a kind of man that is like god came from the father so your idea of existence is not a product of your parents date don't think that it was oops no you are not an oops baby no 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 let them never tell you that was not their design all the days written in your book, O oh God, were written before even a member of my body was formed in the womb of my mother. Meaning that I showed up in my mother's womb at the right time. Because until you understand whether your father and mother are still married, maybe their core business was to bring you forth. Relationship was not the agenda, it's you. Are you getting me? So, so don't begin to feel like, oh, you know, uh, listen, the moment you take the language of you as an idea of God, you kill the concept of purpose. And I'll say this, the current teaching about evolution, where they say some molecules came together. So those molecules are accidental. And that's why that conversation automatically takes men out of purpose. Because purpose tells me, I was, I'm here for a reason, I'm here for a season, and it is only God who can confirm it. So when I become a bunch of cells that are living, and then after that disintegrate, there is no reason of my being. I'll become anything that life offers. So I need to affirm to you, you are here by divine design. I say you are here by divine design. Whether your mom was an alcohol brewer, whether your mom was a, was a prostitute and you've never met your dad, the issue is according to the calendar of heaven, you are supposed to show up now. How you came is not the issue. The issue is you are here and the devil is in trouble. Period. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him. Now you can see singularity, man. This one is not male, man, man. That word is mankind. So God created a kind of himself that is man. And that kind carried two dimensions. He carried male dimension and female dimension. This one is not gender, it's dimension. Somebody said dimension. Gender is a product of your sexual organ placement. That's gender. 
That's why we say this is a man. Because we call you a man from sexual organ dimension. But this one is a language of heaven. God does not have sexual organs. It's heathen gods that marry. Heathen gods, those ones marry. Those are strange gods. They even have children who died and they died. Those are strange gods. Hi. They have grandfathers and grandmothers. And you know religion is very bad because you, 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 you believe in a God that was buried and you believe Okay, let, let's let's stick here. To watch this, yasa. Kila mtu ubiri le na mini, sinio. Sisi tu mini here. Now, so so God does not have gender. Okay, there is no female or male. The language of male and female is dimension. Male represents authority. Female represents power. That's it. Male represents authority. So don't think. I know we draw man from masculinity, with beards and all these things. Let us not be fooled. Angels have no gender. They have a form, but they have no gender. We don't have slay queen angels. So stop calling these people angels. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> because they never marry, nor, but the description, of, of course, is always masculine but at the end of the day male represents authority female represents power so what was god creating a kind that has authority and power hey. male and female authority and power he created them the first man who was a kind of god was a combination of power and authority living in an entity a spirit this man was not a physical man this one was a spirit he was in the level of god this one that's why this man was created because there is a created man everyone is a created man and that is the original man what is to create is to bring into existence out of nothing that is creation bringing into existence out of nothing like this church was created because it has never existed we just sat down began to saw a few things then we brought it up this guy whatever is play, playing right now these are new tunes they have never been played he's creating sound he's not duplicating he's creating he is tapping something that has never existed and causing it to manifest that's how man was created so the first man was a spirit man hello tell your neighbor neighbor and that's who you are you are a spirit. Are we together? You are a spirit. But we have invested a lot in the flesh. Now, let's journey and begin to study this man. Genesis 2.7. To some of you, this is a recap. Everybody read. God. Read it well. God formed man out of dirt from the ground and blew into his nostril the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul. Selah. Let's begin from there. So, there is a man. God said, let us make man. Make. Then God created This is the first class you attend in theology. It's called English 101. So that you can understand language, grammar. Now, this is grammar. There is a created man and a formed man. So you need to understand, there is a man in you that is formed and a man in you that is created. I know we call this scripture in Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed thee, I knew thee. So who did God know? Not the form, but the created entity. Because Jeremiah in the spirit was a prophet before he appeared in a form. Before I formed thee, I knew thee, I anointed thee, I ordained thee, Jesus. 
the man came as a prophet as he was crying God saw a prophet not a young child suckling because the ordination did not wait for a day with men with robes and a horn the man was fashioned as a prophet in the before what is that before you existed as a spiritual force before you came as matter this is the physical. I know some of you even are not believing what I'm saying. Because you think you began to live when you are born. That is the time the form stepped in. Hey. You are in God. You are in eternity with God. Waiting for the time of your showing forth. And that's why in the fullness of time you will go back where you came from. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to anyone? Am I speaking to anyone? So, so let the form not limit you. I can dwell there. Many have been entrapped in this flesh. They have been limited in this flesh. Many have never stepped out of the flesh. And the realities and the blessings of Zion are not in the flesh. They are in the spirit. So God formed man out of that. So, niko na haki ya kusema. Nini wote mumeka hapa ni matope tofauti. Ni matope. Ni matope. So tu sisumbuane. Matope kubwa, matope kidogo. Matope ya black, mato, matope ni mato. That is that. Mchanga ya beach na mchanga ya masha. Sini wiyote ni mchanga. Yote kwa kwa kategori ya. So tu sianze kusumbuana all brown skin, black skin, tall, dark and handsome. Tall, dark, matope. Handsome is personal. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Tu sisumbuane. Come all in here, heaven, when the economy was good and you found there was more matope, it is good. We can call you big and fat. You just came in the right time of the economy. Come all in here, ukakuta matope ni kidogo. It is good, we can call you small. But you just showed up in the wrong time of the economy. But matope ni mato. And I can prove to you, if you close all these doors and we stay here for a month and we die, decompose, guess what? Wakila kiti tutapata heaps of soil and bones. Tu, tu mifupa na kamuchanga. That's who you are. You can imagine how you have taken care of this matope. You, you, you buy designer perfume for matope. You buy a Brazilian weave 25,000 minus tax for matope. You buy mascara, put fake mbutus, you know, for matope. Ah, Jesus. Wanaume bwana asifiwe. Hakuna jimu chatembea. Matope. Ini matope imekauka na ingine bado iko loose. So Eh. One pack ni matope jakauka bwana asifiwe. Tell your neighbor neighbor. Hiyo yote ni matope. And I tell you men have invested if in fact whatever we call foundation all these things we apply on our face it is modified soil <laughs> matope in a pack of vumbi and we <laughs> and we call it makeup jesus oh, oh oh ladies i'm sorry but we are having a conversation hallelujah so you can imagine how we have invested because all we know is that we are a body. But many of us in the realm of the spirit, we are so ugly. No makeup, no nothing, no stamina, no capacity. And the flesh, the flesh will come with four things. The flesh will come with desires. The flesh will come with passions. The flesh will come with lust. And the flesh will come with appetites. Four things, desires, passions, lust, and appetite. So what, why did God give you a flesh? It will come with desires, passion, lust, and appetite. And, and God gave you the flesh to give you legal ground on earth. Now remember the flesh came from the ground. The flesh will never lead you to God. Everything has a source. The spirit came from the father. 
but the flesh came from the ground. The moment you follow the flesh, it will always take you to the world. The moment you follow the spirit, it will always connect you to the source. That is why there is a battle between the flesh and where it came from and between the spirit and where it came from. And these are like two animals in your life. You have a flesh, you feed the flesh more, the spirit will be disempowered. You feed the spirit more, the flesh will be disempowered. It's like you have two dogs, white and black. The black one is the flesh and the white one is the spirit. The one you feed more will rule. Are we together? The flesh is not evil, the flesh is not bad. It's because even the passions, desires, lust and appetites, some of these things are not wicked. I tell you, it's only that they are hijacked by the enemy. And so that's why God cannot take out the flesh. God will give you the spirit for self-control. That's how you, you govern the flesh. You manage the flesh. Jesus, being born again does not take away sexual desires. Are we together? And let no one lie to you. Cold water does not take away sexual desires. It is not a hygiene issue. <laughs> We have lied to church. I tell you, people take showers and still come back. Saying, listen, <laughs> you need the governance of the Holy Ghost. Okay, to me pity your face. To me pick up a cold shower. No, you need the shower of the word. Wash thy mind with the word of God. And then the Holy Ghost will give you self-control. What does self-control mean? It means management and governance. There are things I want to go for, but I'm trying to hold myself. And I can't do it by my strong will. I need a stronger power than the power the flesh is manifesting. It is like when you have a dog on a leash. You see the strength of the leash, that camber, can control a 150 bulldog kg. Depending with the strength, some of us, our flesh is like the dog. One day I was going through an estate of rich foxes, Mothaiga, and I saw a bulldog, very ugly. And the bulldog looked at me, and I looked at it, and it, I ignored it, then I looked at it, and it was still looking at me. And you know, bulldogs don't close their mouth. They are, they, they are pouring a lot of survivor. Then the dog began to bark. And I saw the man behind the dog was a slim guy. But there was a strong metallic uh, kind of uh, leash. And the dog stood on its legs wanting to jump. And the man struggled. And the Holy Ghost revealed to me. And he told me, that's how I deal with your flesh. The spirit is like the man. He might look small. Then the, the leash is the control that the spirit offers. No matter how heavy your flesh is, there are times you go, wah, 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 nataka, nataka. Roli goes and go and be a talker for your relationship. <laughs> After two days, you say, man, never go, guys. Poke out to kufuk on Ingeisha. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, that's why we need the Holy Ghost. Because it takes the spirit to contain the flesh. We can't run away from the flesh. But God had an idea with the flesh. He created the flesh to give you access on earth. Because the assignment of man is not in heaven. Heaven we are going for reward. There is a seat in heaven called the Bema seat. The Bema seat is like where right now we have Olympics. When you win, there is a place where they stand. And they are given the medals. That is that Bema seat is a Corinthian word of a place where a champion stood to receive medals. Now believers will face Christ on the Bema seat. It's called the medal giving seat. Why? Because here they conquered. And one of the battles you have to win is that of the flesh. That's why Paul wrote and said, I crucify my flesh daily. It's not a one day affair. As you wake up, you say, I die. I'm living, but I'm dying. It's no longer me who lives, but Christ in me. This is the only way to walk pure. Hallelujah. You must have the capacity. Because if you don't control the flesh, the flesh will control you. The flesh will never take you to church. church online. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. 
Tell your neighbor the flesh is not bad. If you don't understand its use, you'll abuse it. Are we together? The flesh has a work and that is to bring, to introduce you into the earth for assignment. Without this flesh, we are useless. Because the spirits can never work. Can I go even deeper? Now, the Holy Ghost needs the flesh to express the realities of God. The Spirit of God cannot operate without the flesh. You can see this order in creation. This is what God did. He created the flesh of Christ. It was born. It was raised. When the flesh was ready, the Holy Ghost came and dwelt in the flesh. And after that, that's when the ministry, the assignment of Christ began after, after Jordan. When the Holy Ghost came and found a vessel to partner with, even in this world, it is a battle of vessels. The devil is looking for bodies. Why? The devil understands demons cannot operate on earth without a body. So it is a battle of bodies. It's not a battle of anything. And that's why now the soul comes in. The soul comes in. Let me have three people. That, that's where the soul comes in. Now let's assume this is the flesh. This is all what we see, okay? Okay? This is the spirit. The spirit is always small. <laughs> ma, ma, malnourished. And this is the soul. Are we together? Now listen to me. The battle is a battle of bodies. But you can never have access to a body if you don't have control to a soul. That's why we win souls. Are we together? Now, why, why did God create a soul? We see in this one, he blew into his nostril the breath of life. Then man came alive, a living soul. Now, allow me to share something that are a little bit deep, but follow me clearly. The reality, you don't see because you have eyeballs. You don't hear because you have ear knobs. You don't talk because you have a mouth and a tongue. Neither do you do all you think and do because you have these gadgets of the body. There is a controller. You have eyes but sight is in the soul. You have a mouth but speech is in the soul. You have ears but hearing is in the soul. So the body, God formed a body. But this body was useless. It became alive when the soul entered in that body. That is why when men die, we, we are left with mouth and all the organs, but they can't work. Because the, the soul has exited the scene. It is like I have a phone and I put it on charger, full battery. That phone will operate every software working. There is a level my phone reaches and tells me battery low and it asks for permission to shut some softwares. And when I press OK, I can't access network. There are things that cannot happen. And in medical science, there are times they begin to say you are medically dead. Wewe umeweko kwa ICU. Roho inapiga juni machini zimekueka. Otherwise, the soul was detached. Nonambio tu ni bili na sabu. The heart is beating because there is circulation and the heart is being helped by the machine to pump blood. So it's circulating. But the system died long time ago. So the soul is what gives capacity. Is what gives capacity. When you go to depths of witchcraft, men are trained how to manipulate the soul. This is how a man can look at you and close the gates of your eye and you become blind. A man can look at you and shut the gates of your hearing and you become deaf. A man can look at you and alter at your soul and you become mad. It is the economy of the soul. They have been trained. They know it. They can journey and... Hallelujah. So this body is the most useless thing on this earth. This one. We keep on boasting with it. I had a roommate who was a morgue attendant when I was in campus. He used to come for studies. I didn't have time to go home, so I used to stay in campus. And he told me, Pasi, mwili ni maua. Watu wana letango hajwezi. And he told me, that's the best job. Hausumbuwa ni na client. Namugeuza vile unataka. And he told me, I've seen 
people and after three days, unafura, unakuwa white. You become so useless. This body is so useless without the soul. Are you getting me? And you can see how much we have added value to the body. You can see how socialites are at Sumboa. Next time you just look at them, just tell them this is a bunch of dirt. Some of them consecrated in some arenas of your life, but you are just dust. Seller. <laughs> this body is so useless. The soul is what governs the body. Now, the spirit, this one, cannot affect the body by bypassing the soul. So the spirit must communicate to the soul and the soul must now communicate to the body. So the battles of life, the devil can never attack your spirit. It is too far. That's why the Bible says, fear him that has the power to destroy both the flesh and the spirit. It's only one. The devil can never touch your spirit. He can't. The battle of the devil ends here. He can deal with your body and deal with your soul. And the soul has the mind. Your mind is in your soul. And we'll come to that. The battles of Job were physical flesh attack by affliction and diseases. The second one were the three men plus the wife that surrounded him, accusing him in more than 10 chapters. This was the battle for the mind. Men speaking to the soul and speaking to you. Even the wife telling him, cast God and leave. But guess what? The relationship of Job was not in the flesh. It was not in the soul. It was in the spirit. And that's why the eyes of the spirit saw and he confessed, my redeemer liveth. Because the possibilities of this dimension never hindered the connection of the spirit. Every battle in your life it's either in the soul depression or in the flesh oppression diseases are all here mental issues are here so we can see the devil has moved a notch higher in attacking our time so we are not dealing with anything there is nothing new under the sun so we don't need mental health classes we need to understand what is this soul what does it carry because the moment the devil has control of the soul, he has control of the life. This soul will be so oppressed that it will tell the body to hang itself. Because the body is at the masses. Remember, see what the Bible says. The bread of life, the man became alive, a living soul. And some versions say a living being. This is a being without a soul. It is not living. Am I speaking to anyone? Yes? I'm introducing you to you. It's my life. Now let me tell you how your life looks like. This is you. This is the life you think you have. But this is the reality of what controls your life. Can I go deeper? Now, the moment you are not born again, your spirit is always dead. So it's like you have no spirit. This is a man who's not born again. So this man relies on what he feels and what he knows. He's, that's why the concept of all this conversation about, um, you know, if you want to be sexual orientation, if you want to be lesbian or gay, do what you feel. It is the absence of a living spirit. Because feelings and emotions are here. And we are pushing a generation to do what they feel. But assignment is in the spirit. And the moment you do what you feel. And you don't understand that before I form thee. You are a spirit. I ordain thee. If this reality does not manifest in this flesh. You are a tourist and a useless man on earth. You will do things without fulfillment. Because you are just running life. And this is now the generation of do what you feel. It is the greatest philosophy of satanism. Do what thou will. That is the banner. That is the motto of the Freemason. It is their motto. The way you go to a school and you see better your best as our motto. The Freemason motto is do what thou will. Meaning that let the Holy Ghost never govern you. Rely on the willness of this dimension. And that's the generation we are raising. You know, you can be anything, it doesn't matter. 
high. You cannot be anything. You can be only what God ordained you to be. That's the reality. Until you journey and locate yourself in the spirit, you might survive on the shadows of other men and become useless and die without fulfilling anything. That's why you need to know God for yourself and understand who I am and begin to manifest who you are as unique as you are and become. Can I go deeper just to explain? This is where you begin to see a man saying, this is a dead spirit. So when you have a dead spirit, you have only two things. You have a soul and a body. The devil is in need of bodies. So this is why you hear a man saying, I have sold my soul to the devil. What does that mean? The original thing, what they do, they don't take out a soul. You can't take out this soul and sell it. You, you enter into contracts. The original word for signature is a seal. And so in that contract, you sign. And as you sign, you are placing your life on that document. Even today, if you enter a contract with me of 50 million, if you don't pay the money, your life is at stake in that contract. And what authentifies a contract is a seal. What is a seal? A signature. But the original word for a seal is a soul. So don't think that people sell their souls by taking it out and saying, Devon, do you No. It is by appending to some documents. And they say they append it with their own blood. And at that time, you are, you are, you are, body becomes open to demons and so you you are an artist but now the spirit is dead so demons now begin to use your body for their own expression so this is an artist on stage and he's under a certain demon the demon will take charge of the flesh he will tattoo all his body the demon will take charge of the flesh he will pierce all his body the demon will take charge of the flesh by the time he shows up on stage he is naked it is not fashion there is a demon selling an agenda and then they want us to celebrate them we must be wise this is what we tell people Jorea secular music some of the people have serious covenants with demons. So whatever you are listening to is not the artist you see on TV. This is the body of the artist. The sound here, hey, is depression. So the way he's moving, this one. So you, you are celebrating a flesh. But deep down, the flesh is under a certain bondage. By the time you realize, this spirit has an assignment. By the time you listen to this song in your house for 10 days, you don't pray. Begin to dream having sex with strange men. Why? <laughs> okay, devil's in jinga. Sis in jinga. Hello? Malavidavi. song Lavidavi, unanza kuchat watu ma message aki pepo. I miss you. Na muko FG group. Umetua kamdu kwa FG group. Umeanza kuka DM. I believe you worship in church. I just want to tell you I'm in the race kama Paul Moy. Wewe. <laughs> tell your neighbor, neighbor. Be walk. It's time to be wise. Are we together? So we begin to see even demons know they can't operate without a body. The battle is not just for souls, it's also for bodies. Because body gives you legal ground of operation on earth. But you see, this is the controlling, this is the control room. So we need, we need the soul. That's why we win souls. Have you ever heard of the, but see, we are going for soul winning. You don't even know what you are winning. Seven souls came to the Lord. What were those? Seven men and women. No, those are bodies of men and women. What did you win? How do you win a soul to the Lord? How? That means you are bringing that soul to the governance of eternity. And the only pathway is by the Holy Ghost to get in. By the power of regeneration and resurrection to raise a dead spirit back to life. And when the dead spirit is back to life, the realities of a living spirit will begin to influence this soul and the flesh will change. So we are doing counseling here, but the problem is here. How oh, you know you are depressed? So what was your background like? Oh, Jesus. 
So you are from a single mother. That could be the root cause of your depression. So self-esteem. It's no self-esteem. Listen, those are Tamilologists in the secular world. You have a spiritual rank problem. It is either the spirit is so low that the flesh is so high in desire. Or whatever is in this soul is so perverted that the expression is an esteem. An esteem is a feeling. Now let the Bible be the Bible. We are not psychiatrists. And even psychiatrists come to a place where they fail. In fact, the law of psychology, you counsel around 15 people, you also go for counseling. That's the law. So they are counselors of counselors. I don't know where the cycle ends. So those who counsel counselors, I don't know who counsel the counselor of counselors. That's why you need the Holy Ghost, who is the mighty counselor. Counselor. Matters are settled there. Desires. Alignment. Proclivity. He gives you his desires. They are not suicidal. Appetites are settled there. Contentment. There are days we used to preach fire. Because the flesh was not ruling. That was not the issue. Una took your place. What one is when your pastor on be a hubiri kwanza na kupewa kwa kimalizi or salimia kanisa. Apo ame kupelea. Mungu anashuka. One organized revival meeting. Because it was not about appearance. We were so lost in God that what affects flesh never affected us. Kupanda mata ikuwa shida. Kulala kwa hao bedzita ikuwa issue. That never defined us. It never gave us status. Yuluko na ingia chuo. Uspoona roho wa mungu wa meshuka. Unasikia mungu ni nini nilifanya mbae. Unambia wadu unua mikono. Unua mikono. Unasikia bubu bubu. Unasikia ndue yo sasa. They are called spiritual encounters. Unalala kwa kamatris chini kama mfalme. After seeing the glory. Because your desires have shifted. The tangent is eternal. Even though I do good on a cup of magari, you are making me aroma. But appetite, I go. I go to magari. It was for eternal things, and that's how things follow you. But the moment proclivities are here, Jesus, you will need to keep clients in charge. Can I ask you now? Be the message, Kakwa. Seven keys of becoming a millionaire. Somebody say, "I'm a millionaire, mommy," and people are dying in poverty. Ume shout, "I'm a millionaire," fifty times. Now to change it to hundred thousand. You need to ask that pastor. Who goes serious? Now to many a kumbi ama millionaire. I just can't meet him. Mumbi has so many zonos kwanza. If they can't work for him, he has no business preaching them. I saw a man. At the night at the school of millionaires, the mindset of a millionaire. Nikaskia kumumbi ya. Read those notes because even the location where you are doing that broadcast, I can tell you have no capacity. Okay. Ah, okay, sir. Well, guess yeah, Chris Kirubi and I end alive. Na hana ta, muna strago kumona. Na nongea ten ways of become. See, kama ways in unu ata. She was on my notes, Kwanza. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the soul. Tell your neighbor, the mind is in the soul. This is what makes the body to be alive. What we call death is the exit of the soul and the spirit. Are we together? That's what we call death physically. When this one exits, it's like a phone that has been plugged out of power. In a matter of no time, it will go off. And until you get power, I, I don't think dead men lose their eyes. Some even die opening their eyes. They still have eyeball, but they cannot see. Mouth, but they cannot talk. Because their capacity of speech, sight, hearing, was in the soul. I'll give you a homework to go and read at home. The story of the rich man and Lazarus. Where was the encounter? Not on earth. So the Bible says they died, both of them. One was carried by an angel, the other one was buried. That's a very sad statement. A rich man that was buried, a poor man that was carried by angels, both of them died. So they entered a spiritual realm. But read that story, Lazarus soul. The rich man had. He felt pain. He said, pour some water on my tongue. Not this one. It was what gave the 
tongue power to taste and sense. That conversation is not on earth. It is outside the earth. And that is not a conversation of bodies. It is a soul conversation. Now the problem is where the soul goes is where the spirit will go. And so the soul will create awareness to the spirit. Soul do it and be a spirit. Eh, hey, to hell. Become a tulifa nyele kitu. Hallelujah. And it is the same soul that will say to Mengia, we made it. Because the spirit is also under the governance. Now you see where the battle is. Now, when a man is born again, God does not need to use your soul to talk to you. When a man is born again, the interactions of God are in the spirit. And then the spirit now begins to rule the soul. Now listen, this is the life of an unbeliever. Face that side. Face. This is the life of an unbeliever. The first thing you'll meet in an unbeliever is body, soul. Unasikianga, mina kuanga mspiri lakini sisana. Naombanga nikienda interview na food. Those are unbelievers. Uye waskia? Eh. Now this, some of you, this is how you come for dates. It was a game of body and emotions. And that's why the way you are heartbroken, the spirit was not there. That's why you took time to dress this body in a sexy way. And that's why, the, because what is in the soul is so much of the world. So it influences how the body should appear. So this is not a date. It is an encounter of bodies. Nothing spiritual. And then you keep on asking. Why is it that all men are after sex? Listen, you brought body. The thing has to reverse. The thing has to reverse. That the first person we meet is the you in the spirit. This is why Paul writes and says, Now I know no man after the flesh. Because the first thing I encounter is the dealings of the spirit. That by the time I'm showing up in that gate, this is holy ground. This is holy ground. Ah, Jesus. You are, oh my good. Now I teach when I did. Umebeba atmosphere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? You brought the spirit. If the man is in the flesh, you can't connect. If the man is after your body, he can't see it. The atmosphere is different. See intimidation in capacity. <laughs> Am I speaking to anyone? This is the alignment in the spirit. Because the moment the spirit influences the soul, the flesh is under the control. And this is how we overcome the flesh. That's why we need to give attention to the spirit. Prayer. Put makeup here. Let me tell you, the moment you are beautiful here, this thing will fall in place. We don't deal with you according to face value. After five minutes, I'll be used to your face. The next thing will be, what car is thou? We don't connect with you because of your body size. You can be short but anointed. You can be big and full of the Holy Ghost. So it is not about how the body looks like. It is about the possibilities of the spirit. And that's why we have to invest here. Show me a man that has invested spiritually. And is depressed. Joy does not come from here. This one needs happenings and happiness. My praise and worship. My hype man. I want my imba. Happening. Feedback your church in a kwanga. Maze pasitu li skia poa. Happenings. Oki ingi hapa hapa ni encounters. Atmosphere after chai, after happening. So you need. 
You need another happening. And this is where we miss it. So we try to create church to be a place of happenings, not encounters. Not encounters. And that's why we are raising very weak, defeated believers. The day you will be in a position to praise in a storm, no, you are not maturing. That you have denied the devil. You are telling him, you can touch my soul. You can touch my body. But you can't touch the conduit of my fellowship with my master. That's why the story of Job is there. is to show you a man that conquered, but he was a spirit man. He refused to live in the realities. Guess what? The flesh was well pampered. The Bible says Job used to wash his feet in butter. What an iletemta. Job ali kwa nosha miguna blue band. Yo ndio bata ya siku ya leo. Eh wife ni aje? Ni akaeka bucket ka blue band na sikia nimeboeka. Okay, sometimes I read the Bible like that. Just for the image to be real. And butter was for the rich. It was not as available as it is today. And that was to show you how the flesh was well taken care of. The man was considered to be the wealthiest. He moved from the rank of a city millionaire to a beggar in the street. But never cast God. Never cast God. Because the first thing you met in Job was his spirit. Not the achievements. Of the, well, not the achievements that are connected to the flesh. Let me learn this lesson. Now, have you seen how you ought to be? Are you getting it? Yesterday I was in a meeting. It was a graduation. As I was seated there, I said, these guys have written Pastor T in the, in the program. And you know, graduation, it began well. There was a lot of joy. Ah, you know, the graduate was brought. They were singing. And I was feeling, wow. You know, and I began to look at my Bible. When you see a pastor in church going through his Bible, he's changing his sermon. He's feeling, ah. Uku uku wakai kwa na pena vitu deep. Waja ni tafte kamoja kwa fresha. So I began to look. The Holy Ghost told me, what is the name on that flyer? Pastor. How did they receive you? Pastor told me, show up in your office. Hi. So, the meeting almost went south. The Holy Ghost came down. And I could tell, hapa. Mikama tume miss mikutano ya inje. Na kasound kalikuwa kazuri. Something happened and I say, there was an option for me to come as a pastor. And there was an option for me to come as a spirit man to do what the spirit wanted me to do. Are you getting me? And let me tell you, the concept of fitting in most of the times is when you send the flesh ahead of the spirit. I said where they call me as a pastor, I'll do pastoral work. I will pray and teach the word and sit down. The spirit has to be in front. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is how you go for dates. This is how you go for company meetings. This is how you go for deals. Are we together? You show up in a meeting and discernment tells you wrong deal. And you listen to the guy and he's mentioning money to stir your appetite. But appetites are here. Here you deal with discernment. <laughs> ah, you know so we can make 100 million a head. But you see, we, le, na, kuna boy wangu na kuanga pale kiare, nitaongea na yetu chore, najiambia red flag ya kwanza. Yep. You've never made 100 million. And you tell them, give me time. I want to think about it. In ya sai, deal moto ina iva sai mbichi. Yeah, give me time. Na inge unambia Holy Ghost, cover me with your wings. Take away this appetite. Every door that is not mine, close it. And you tell the guy, I'm sorry, we can't do business. Uska me chizu wewe, in ya andre dem, unambia, yes. I'm sorry. But appetite ikitawala. Tuta kukujia kotini. Maze ita tupasi, ita tupasi. Maze, najua, najua wewe ni mungu wa Paulo na sila. Wewe, ule mungu na, wewe ukiomba ntachiliwa. No. Watch a flesh is of a consequence of appetite. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is the order. Are you getting me? I'm staying there because I'm sorting someone. I said I'll take time. Now, this is the soul. This is what the devil fights for. Your mind is here. Your mind is here. And I'm going to give you the few things that are in the mind then we live. Have you learned something? You can have your seats. Let me share the few things that are in the mind. Your mind has two components. 
Your mind has two components. I'm sharing this, then we pray and leave. Is that okay? So if you know anyone that is depressed or pressed, tell them to follow this series. And I'm also planning to duplicate this into a book. Your mind has two components. The first component has what I call intellect stroke logic or slash logic. There is a part of your mind that carries the intellect and the logic. There is a part that carries emotions and there is a part that carries will, self-will. So there is intellect, emotions and will. We always say, not my will, but your will. The only way you can deal with the will of God and the capacity to surrender your will is when you change what you know and what you feel. Allow me to explain this. Intellect, as I'm speaking right now, I'm not speaking to your spirit. I am depositing data in your intellect capacity. There, there is something in your mind that feeds on knowledge. It is there. Whether good or bad knowledge, there is something that feeds on knowledge. It is in the mind. That's why we go to school. To feed the intellect. And everyone has emotions. It is called the seat of emotion. The seat of emotion. And for me, the will or the gate of will, this is the actions we do or the actions we take. Our actions are dictated by what we know and what we feel. That's what dictates our actions. You can't change what a man does until you change what a man knows and what he feels. That's the reality. This is the lectures that people are given even in rehabs. Because if I tell you alcohol is sweet and when you get high, you speak English, I've started something. Are we together? And if I tell you when you are stressed up, alcohol will help you. One day you will be stressed up. You will take alcohol. Because you have a knowledge and you felt like it. A good example is the story of Adam and Eve. Eve, the devil visits Eve. And there's a reason why Eve was visited and not Adam. The reason is very simple. God spoke to Adam. Adam spoke to Eve. Now, Adam had God. Eve had Adam. Let me show you the order. When you hear God, it is revelation. When you hear man, it is information. Now, a man that has revelation carries conviction. A man that carries information carries understanding. Okay, I'm coming to you. So, when I hear God, I carry conviction. You can't take me out. If I sleep and I hear God, like I've had God, 2022, Nikuhama, you can't change my mind. You can give me budgets, but you can't change my conviction. I know that I know I've had God. Are we together? Now, men that hear God carry conviction. See how the devil approached Eve. The devil came and said, did God really say, really say, are you sure you had God? Those days in Form 1, Unatumo naendo nambiwa. Go and tell Form 4 to shut up. Nashikindia katrauza. Form 4, the principal has said you shut up. You know that time you are not afraid. You know the source that has sent you. Now, umekujo umeambiwa namtu. Principal amesema uambie Form 4 to shut up. Unaend up. Nimeambiwa ni wambie. Principal amesema you shut up. Wanachekanga. Wakozile za, are you sure you have heard? So at that level, your confidence is altered. Are you getting me? So ideally, Eve became the right candidate. Now, what did Eve receive? Information. What was absent? Explanation. So the law said, thou shalt not eat. Eve answered and said, even touch. Said, right candidate. Did God really say? We were told not to eat or even touch. With who? Me in a liambiwa. Okay. Do you know? Now, that one, do you know, is explanation. What does explanation start? Curiosity. Some of us, we were good until explanation came. <laughs> My first kiss will be on the altar. Mm. <laughs> the frogs you have kissed. <laughs> now, what happened when you, when you are innocent making that vow? <laughs> you had information. Then someone brought explanation. And that explanation came with added information. So you see already that 
intellect, logic, faculty attracted another data that was conflicting. And every word carries some energy. Words are not syllables. Words are energies. That is why silence sometimes can never be offensive. Words, one word, today, one word, I can walk out here and look at you and say, wow, you look amazing. The favor of God is upon you. Jesus. And we'll go home feeling, I, why? I've just uttered words. The energy in that word has shifted your energy levels emotionally. And the next thing, you came happy, but you're going to leave, sir. Why? I've not beaten you. I've released an energy from words that are negative. Am I speaking to anyone? Are you getting it? And that's why that faculty of intellect and logic is always crying for information, knowledge. And when it is filled with the wrong information, it will begin to control how you feel. And the moment your knowledge and your emotions are under a certain power, your actions will be automatically off. Because your will is different. Now see how God changes us. God will release revelation to take charge of intellect. God will give you the Holy Ghost to take charge of your emotions. The moment you have the revelation of God and the emotions of the Holy Ghost, you will do the will of the Father. Hello? Am I speaking to anyone? So what we have denied people is the truth of the Father and the encounters of the Spirit. And so we, we have people that are struggling to obey the will of God. It is when the cry of the Spirit becomes your cry. The feelings of the Holy Ghost becomes your feelings. And it is when the knowledge of God ruleth your mind that you will do things according to the will of God. I met a young girl and she told me, Pasi, I'm in this relationship, it's not good and I want to get out, but I don't want to hurt the guy. I said, no, there are two guys in this picture. There is Jesus and Kenovia. <laughs> At the end of the day, one will be hurt. Choose to hurt Kenovia or Jesus. I said, the matter is heavy in your court. Because you keep this guy because of indulgence. Jesus is bleeding. If you leave this guy, Jesus, who's your creator, will be happy. So Kenodia cannot give you Jesus. But Jesus can give you another Kenodia. So make your decisions <laughs> wisely. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to anyone? The second faculty. So, so you have seen that faculty, okay? That's why we teach the word every day. Because you can never change the life of a man until you change what they know. Men are product of knowledge. And that's why you see right now the rate of atheism is high. Because secular intelligence is also on the rise. So people have a knowing that is not of God. And then now they tend to incline. That knowledge also carries energies and emotions. The second one is the second faculty of your mind carries consciousness subconsciousness and memory it carries consciousness subconsciousness and memory excuse me sorry it carries consciousness subconsciousness and memory now let me tell you some of the people that struggle in their mind is because of memories. You have a flash disk, for lack of a better word. You have a memory stick. Some of you is 250 GB, full of garbage. Bad experiences. The Lord must flash it. All the things of your life, negative, negative, negative. No good encounters. Allow me to say this. And this one, I'm preparing for they are singles eh? in August. One of the things you need to do before you get married is interrogate the baggage of background. Everyone has a background. You get a man who was raised by a single mother. That man has daddy hunger. You get a woman who was raised by a single mother. 
she has survival tactics without a man. Muki kosana, unasikia nantenda kwetu. She has seen her mother survive without a man. So don't think you will come and see whether you are going to control. So that's a baggage. See people, she has lived her memories are surviving without a man. So who are you to think that she will not live? So some ladies are not bad. You must, when you receive a woman, choose your problems wisely. That's why you did to analyze your problem and say this problem is manageable. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm speaking facts. There is no perfect man, no perfect woman. We, no one came from heaven. We are all from systems that shaped how we view things. So by the time she shows up or he shows up, hey, you, you get a man whose father used to be commanding and dominating. He gets in the house and says, Nataka Maji. He could be speaking in tongues, but he has a baggage of command. And you are raised where your father used to go to the kitchen and do dishes. Now you have married. That is a time bomb. Muta kosana. Muta pigana. Na mumi okoka. Na sande muna kuja mebeba Bible. I know I'm dealing with stuff. It's called the burden of background. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. When you are dating. Kula pole pole. Collect data. Talk up on a catharsis, a hypothesis. Analyze. Hey, okay, on a red flag. Don't ignore. The day you stand here, it will be too late. Because even if you leave the guy, you are still in the covenant. So we must understand this thing. Yes? Yes. Everyone has a background. Some of us were raised in boys' schools. Some grew in mixed schools. So see when you raise your boys' school, I have to do a question on my my wife used to tell me, is it Mademo and Biangu Ivo? Because me, I'm real, Tamuliza. Tamuliza, I knew you salon. In your style, Uliona. Aku kwa na ingine. Sayo a mekali a mawe Kenya ta market. Two hours. Aki suko na masai. Aki vutu ata no mona nyuele. Na a mefanya even do. At least, a kaipoa. Una mongali ugo. He style him to a forehead. Yeah. Hi. What has if you will? Now let's talk about our church. Now see lack of prayer. Maombi ukosa. Unaenda mbinguni. But uli uli grow ya kwa my boy. Boy school from nursery. So mnaongeanga vile mnafi. Fort we are going to meet. Hallelujah. It will be a nice conversation. Amen. Because I've discovered some of these things are elementary, but people don't, people ignore them. We've put a lot of pressure on a woman who loves God, a woman who prays, a woman who your intercessor, Proverbs 31, will have a real conversation. You'll know that everyone is made, even you, before you become that man or woman. We are finishing, amen? So tell your neighbor this memory, subconsciousness, and consciousness. Consciousness is the reality of the now, Subconscious is when you cannot recognize the now. When a man faints, he enters subconscious. When you sleep, that's subconscious. Memory is the dealings that are stored in a certain archive in the mind. Are we together? Are we together? Also in the soul. So these are the things that constitute the soul. The soul also has senses. The five senses. Smell, see, touch, taste, and hear. The soul has all that. So you can see the big part of the soul constitute the mind. Are we together? The big part of the soul constitutes the mind. And that's why he that has your mind has your life automatically. And a wise man wrote and said, never lose your mind. You might need it in the next relationship. <laughs> so don't lose your mind. Are we together? Let me give you the biblical definition of the mind and the psychological so that you can be at par with the people of the first service. Nepesh. The biblical, the word Nepesh is a Hebrew word. N-E-P-H-E-S. N-E-P-H-E-S. This is what it means, soul or mind in Hebrew. And Nepesh has five meanings. Nepesh or Nefesh has five minutes. The first meaning, it means person. Person. It means person. The second one, it means soul. It means soul. The third one, it means appetite. 
it means appetite. The fourth one, it means life. And the fifth one, it means you. It means you or the real you. So the mind is nefesh. In Hebrew, it means life, soul, appetite, person, and you. Are we together? So when the Bible talks about the mind, it automatically talks about your life, your soul, your appetite, your person, and the real you. That is why the battle of the mind will always attack the whole of you. The psychological one is a little bit technical. I don't know, does someone need that definition? Yes? Okay, for learners. This one has many jargons. The psychological definition of the mind uh, is the aspect of intellect. The aspect of intellect. The aspect of intellect and consciousness. The aspect of intellect and consciousness manifested manifested as combination of thought. Manifested as combination of thoughts, perceptions. Thoughts, perceptions, memory, emotions. Thoughts, perceptions, memory, emotions, will, and imagination. Will and imagination. Including all of the brain, including all of the brain's consciousness and unconscious cognitive process. Including all of the brain's consciousness. All of the brain's consciousness and unconscious. All of the brain's consciousness and unconscious cognitive process. The psychological definition of the mind touches on all the elements of the mind. It touches on the memory, the consciousness, the will, the emotions. Let me give you... This is something for those of you that have brothers anyone in addiction this is what I call the hierarchy of change write it down the hierarchy of change the hierarchy of change the hierarchy of change you begin with knowledge number one you don't change a behavior without addressing what the person knows you don't change a behavior without addressing what the person knows so you begin with knowledge that knowledge will produce these six things I believe knowledge will number one change your perception 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 is the view in judgment of something if I tell you this water is not good for human consumption how you will view this glass it will not be attractive but if I tell you this water is very sweet how you view it it will be different why because the knowledge changes how you view the glass are we together? The second thing, after perception is changed, your attitude is altered. Attitude. 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 The dealings. You, you, you will see it as poison, but even as you pass here, you'll not even bother with it. You know this is a bad thing. You can even hold it and pour it so that someone does not take it. If I say it is sweet, you might pass here, look at the water, look at the people. And something will tell you, I'm an yonje. Why? Your attitude towards the thing. If a child shakes the table, you'll tell them, that's a good thing. Are we together? When attitude is changed, it begins to trigger our habits. Our habits. Whatever you do, a habit is a projection of your attitude. It's a projection of your attitude. There's a book I was reading. It was called The Seven Habits of Successful Men. And even the writings of Miles Monroe, he dwells a lot with attitude. Because he said, the results of men are connected to attitude. Your attitude of life determines how far you go in life. If you have a wrong attitude, and that attitude has a background of information. Are we together? So now, that will uh, affect your habit, what you do. And a repeated habit becomes a behavior. A repeated habit becomes a behavior. And a repeated behavior becomes a lifestyle. And a repeated lifestyle shapes your destiny. So, out of that hierarchy, you'll see, if we don't release knowledge, we are already affecting destiny. 
because men will live haphazardly. So the entrance of knowledge aligns so many things. Are we together? Are we together? Now, when there is entrance of wrong knowledge, something is introduced. When you have wrong knowledge, like what Eve received, explanation, her perception about the fruit changed, her attitude changed, and something got introduced is called curiosity. Curiosity. And that is what made Eve pick the fruit. Now see the coordination. There is knowledge, explanation, perception, attitude. Then what is, did, did she do? First of all, the five senses were involved. She saw, she touched, she smelled, she tasted because she had. Okay, I'll repeat. She had the voice, sense of hearing. It changed how she saw. Curiosity provoked her to pick that is touch. Before you eat, you must have smelled. Then eating is the concept of taste. So you can see how the soul becomes very important when it comes to the attacks of the devil. Am I speaking to anyone? So because we are a church of young people, I know sometimes Yes? We're doing a good job. And most of the times, when people come to report matters to us, especially when you're pastoring a young church, it is not an opportunity to kill. Are you getting it? Because there is a reason why that person is doing what they are. Interrogate the what I call the vacancy of knowledge and train them. That's why many young people don't relate with church. So the, the point there is discredit the ministry. Kick the boy out. But who has the time to sit with him and know the knowledge gap? Are we together? And that's why it's not easy because you have to sit. So if today someone comes and tells me, Pasi, your praise and worship the easiest thing is to tell them, Staki Kwaona. The next thing is to be intentional and tell them the altar and righteousness. And teach them. And I tell you, it is more beneficial to train a man and give the right knowledge than to kick them out. And that's what many churches are doing. We are not sitting men down to tell them. It's like we are waiting for perfect men that we never raised. It doesn't happen like that. Ministry is about carrying the errors and the soils of men. By the time they call you dad, so And I say that is the price of fatherhood. So we have even in the spirit we have to pay the price. And that's why I rather sit you down like this. Take you pole pole bit by bit, precept by precept. So that the day I will rebuke you, I'll have authority. That is not in your level. You are better than this. Grow up. And I love you. And I hug you. And I tell you, seven days, go and repent. I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray she dey go nigani one to three, end of three days. Hajawai rudi. Now come on, I'm training you to survive without my presence, because if I don't do that, you will never grow. But I believe Aliomba, she was traveling. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I just want us to make a prayer. Now we understand better. Are we together? And this is the prayer that I want you to make. I've taught about the flesh. And I've taught about the soul. I just wanted to tell the Holy Ghost to strengthen you in the inner man. 
Your battles in life are connected to the body and the soul. In just two minutes, call upon the heavens. It is prayers of understanding that bring clarity. Just tell the Lord, Lord, strengthen me in my spirit so that I can be able to subdue the flesh. Listen to me, the appetites of the flesh sometimes are too strong. The urges and the desires are too powerful. But I want to assure you, the Holy Spirit is not limited. He's not incapacitated. He has the power. I tell you, we will see a righteous church. We will see young men. Though they are in this realm, they are saints. They have been set apart. They are hagios. They have been consecrated. They carry the proclivities of the Holy Ghost. It is by this understanding that you begin to tell the Lord, every memory, let it be deleted. Whatever was was planted in my mind encounters and events that happened in my life that began to shape my destiny let them be deleted today let them be deleted today this is the hour to tell the Lord fill my mind with thy word let thy word occupy every area and every sector of my mind some of us we struggle with thoughts we struggle with the patterns of ideologies they are demonic when God breathed he that was a fresh breath the first mind that man carried was a supernatural mind that is why God entrusted Adam with the assignment of naming all the animals. Begin to declare, let the original breath of God be upon my life. Let the Holy Ghost take charge of my emotions. I want to operate in the will of El Elyon. I want to walk in the ordinances of El Elyon. Let the Spirit of God, let him take charge of my emotions. Let the Word of God, let it delete and replace anything that stood as a truth. The Bible said you are one word is life and your word is light. Let the life of the word begin to take preeminence in my mind. Let the life of that word, let it take charge of my life. The Bible declares that the gospel is the power unto salvation. Let the power resident in the gospel now deliver me and set me free. My soul, my soul. Let there be an interrogation. Everything that is not of the Lord. It was David that came to a place and said, search my heart, search my nepesh, search my soul, O oh God. Let this be a day. Let the Lord interrogate every soul. Let the Lord search every soul. There are desires, there are appetites, there are things deposited. Let there be a divine deleting. May I be alive in the spirit. May I be alive in the spirit. May I be awake in the spirit. Commando Pelaria Sataya, Co Palira Conta La Paya. Let my spirit be strengthened. I receive strength in the inner man. I receive strength in the inner man. I receive strength in the inner man. I am an overcomer. I am victorious. I'm more than a conqueror. The flesh shall not rule me. The soul shall not rule me. I am a spirit man. I walk by the dictates of the spirit. I am ordained from above. Mesa Catalaporia, Leberia Sataya. Every battle of the flesh, every battle of the soul, let it end right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your conscious, your subconscious and memory, let them be renewed by the word. Let thy intellect, let the deposit of lies, let them be deleted. Memories that keep on haunting you, let them be deleted today in the mighty name of Jesus. Shatala Bratola. Let the mind of Christ be with you. That mind that was in Jesus, let it be upon you. Hallelujah. As we prepare to give our offering. When God breathed upon Adam, it was a fresh breath. The man received a supernatural mind. There is a level of supernatural thinking. That possibility is still there. That's why the Bible says, be ye renewed. Be ye renewed. Be ye metamorphosed. There is something called the renewing of the mind. It's taking the mind back to its original status. Some of us, we have international ideas. They cannot be handled in this realm. There is a mind. Jesus said, let this mind, Paul writes and says, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. What does that mean? I have to permit that mind. The word let there is permit. Allow the expression of the thought patterns of Jesus to be upon you. Begin to see things with the lenses of El Leon.
Don't see them from a defeated level. Begin to see matters in the level of Christ. There is a mindset that is of God. That mind can never be depressed. That is the mind that says where there is a casting down, you begin to declare a lifting up. It looks like it is confessing contrary, but those are the realities of where we live. The atmospheres that are negative, there is a level you reach and you have to come to a place and encourage yourself because atmospheres are too defeating. There are levels you enter and everything is crumbling down. Hello. Next Sunday we'll launch out on it. And some of us, let me say this. I discovered one thing. And this one I'm saying with a lot of wisdom. We'll build it up next Sunday. There are, there are men that act as gates to your mind. You see where I am as a pastor? Not everyone can reach me. But there are people that can be reached. This is what I've learned to do with Elijah. Anyone that comes to tell me something, I always audit. Because I know you could be a Peter who's telling me don't go to the cross. You are very close. So the devil knows I can't speak to Pastor T directly. But I'm going to use a Peter to pass the communication. Listen to me. Some gossips brought to your door. They are coming as a pathway to disrupt your mental function. Be wise. Audit everyone that comes with stories. <laughs> Let me give you wisdom. Go and audit some people who bring you news. And ask yourself, out of 10 news, how many are positive? The moment you discover, hey mama come out. Gossip number one. 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 Gossip number two. You look at ten of them negative. That's not a friend. That's a gate. That's a gate of fermentation. That you are very joyful. And then they look for you. And they begin to poison. And you discover after that you feel like you are drained. Some of these things are gates. I'll teach you about gossip on Sunday. Gossip is like fire. It spreads where people talk. It stops when a man keeps quiet. You must be the diffuser of gossip. <laughs> Are you getting it? And some of us, you begin the day so well and the devil knows. This one will never fornicate. This one will never drink. But I know I'll attack the soul. Come to Tukana Kujia Kofisi. Kanaanza kukupe moshene. I know not talk about the Manguna Maringo, by the way. I don't want to marry Miriam as a Manguna Kwangam Tiaji, by the way. I don't want to ask the Jimali Kwachanga. What can you come back to where we do? It was an idea. But you not talk about Poki Filai. Key energy. Ah, Kuna Taimo Kanza Kubonga, Kaya Fons. Ah, now about your wisdom. Una could a Monday to Friday. Kuna to me, Twingin and Tokuvunga. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. There are some gossipers who are losing audience today. Wewe ndo umekuu kipeana masiku yako. Alafu they affect you. Pastor hata nasema vile unavaa unakaa kijana sana. Alafu nauliza watu wa gani? Ni watu tu wa gani? Niambie wawili. Wewe jua tu watu wa nani? May you be delivered from those doors. Your life must be full of joy and full of happiness. From today be a lot when gossip doors and and these are men very close to you so ata wale upelekanga story julize nimekuwa mlango leo sela father i bless your sons and daughters and dear lord i declare that this coming week shall be the best for them i declare possibilities of zion i declare doors are opening iron gates bronze gates where everything ordained for them in this coming week shall locate them. As they are stepping out, they are stepping out to manifest and shine. We are in this body to rule. We declare dominion is our nature. As we are stepping out, we have authority, dominion over the air, dominion over the land and over the sea. No power of darkness can hinder us and stop us. I declare these are the lights set up on high places. They are shining and radiating with the glory of El Elyon. May this be the best week of your life. May this be a week of testimonies. May this be a week to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. May this be a week of revelation and divine encounters. May this be a week to journey in the spirit and discover destinations in the realm of the spirit. As we step out 
even the new wave of COVID cannot touch you. I covenant with your life, covenant with your destiny, covenant with your future, and I declare you are covered. You cannot be sick. That virus has no permission to touch you. In the name of Jesus, whatever you do shall prosper. Where you lay your hands shall succeed. Where God has planted you, your grace will flow. In Jesus' name we pray. For all the parents, when you take your children, we wish you journey masses. And we have prayed for your sons and daughters. They are the best. Hallelujah. They are the best. They will bring you honor. Amen. Before I receive the offering, is there anyone? I've seen visitors. Visitors we are meeting at the VIP parlor. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're a visitor, don't worry. We have cappuccino and pizza. Today we're doing cappuccino. Eh? I'm at today's day for mocha. Okay, well, I, I think it will be there. Amen. By faith. Underline the word faith. Amen. Is there anyone that wants to receive Jesus? Amen. This is the best offering that you can give. Anyone? Anyone? You know, there are people who come to church who accept my Leo now Coca. So I wouldn't like to lock anyone out. Hallelujah. Okay, are you ready to give? Oh, thank you. Yes, let's receive that brother. Thank you. Just usher him here. Usher him here. Come, bro, come. Amen. Let, let's celebrate. My goodness. My goodness. Amen. Amen. God, I could bless. Thank you for coming. Is there anyone else? Just begin to pray for him. Anyone else? You know, I just like it when I see men come to the Lord and even women without a song, just a conviction of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else here there? Listen, we, we can wait for you for two minutes. This is very important. More than the offering we are collecting, this is very important. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? My goodness. You know, some of us, our parents have been crying for us. So coming to the Lord is very powerful. Is there anyone else? Jesus. Amen. Let's just stretch our hands and pray for this brother. This day is the day that the Lord had made for him. Begin to pray. This is a soul. This is a destiny. This is a life. This is a man that carries the possibilities of Zion. Before the foundations of the earth, the Lord knew you. You are ordained for greatness. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are a child of God. You carry the image of the Father. You carry the nature of your Father. Today is the day to surrender your soul to the possibilities and the realities of Zion. Knowing that you cannot save yourself. You have run to the altar believing that he died for you. He delivered you and now I declare by the authority that is in the name of Jesus the Bible says them that believed he gave them the power to become the sons of God you are a child of God behold the old is gone and the new has come there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus may this mark as a new day in your life a new beginning a new order has just begun may the Holy Ghost even come upon you to lead you usher you control you and govern your life in in the name of Jesus, whatever you did in the past is in the past. You are now stepping into a new you, stepping into a new truth, stepping into a new reality. In the name of Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. The Bible says when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that indeed uh, that will make you, 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 there is a conversion that happens. It is not the prayer that saves, it is the belief that saves. Amen. Just say, Lord Jesus. Today, willingly, I come to you knowing that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I accept I cannot save myself. I accept you died for my sins. You resurrected to give me a better resurrection. And today, I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and I declare now I'm a new man I'm born again born of God born of the Spirit and I belong to you Jesus when you come for the church let me be among the bride in Jesus name Wow hallelujah church let's celebrate our brother let's celebrate him hallelujah hallelujah what's your name sir I'm Steve yes Steve Steve Karibu sana Steve. Mani mso wa power. Mini shakupenda tu hivono upendo wa God. Sasawa. This is a good man. 
is going to take your name alafu tembea naye sasa umeingia kwa hii mbogi hakuna kutoka amen wow let's celebrate steve hallelujah amen jesus is lord if jesus can save he can heal amen that's how you know jesus is in the house because no one comes unto the father unless called by the son did you come with your offering and your tithe and your first fruit and your free will give it now it's time to give tell your neighbor now let's give tell your neighbor let's give amen let me tell you something church even as we are giving if all of us if all of us were faithful with their tithes and offerings the word is faithful are you getting it if all of us are faithful with their tithes offerings the free will we are giving i tell you the truth we don't need to raise money in another way tithe offering and your pledges those who pledge that's told on yesterday we did an event for young people it was a little bit expensive and i said if all of us are faithful we will we don't even need to have i don't know a special contribution because men are meeting the church will have capacity to run every event without pay and i want us to adopt that culture that you are just saying i'm faithful are we together with my tithe and my offering a conference is coming up and i want to assure you we don't need to do a fundraiser we don't need people to pledge o si juna toa litakumia maziwa mimi natoa pesa ya mafuta the money you give and that's how you become partakers of blessing because the moment that money goes to the works of ministry yesterday some young men came here they were filled with the holy ghost we spent almost 50000 just to have an event let me tell you, you can't compare that destiny with 50000 and we couldn't charge them because we know they are the masses of parents is that okay so the moment we are just faithful tell your neighbor faithful tell your neighbor faithful tell your neighbor they, we will do many things are we together and and that will be my word to you i know we don't i don't call people i don't even know how much you tithe there are places where if you don't tithe unas kianga eh kama huko mzima sijaona bahasha yako ya fugu kama miezi biri bado kazi iko you know we don't do that amen because i really want to give you to give out of revelation there are many projects ahead of us even the whole moving we need a lot of money but i want to believe these people here are sufficient to carry the burden is that okay yes i know we uh, there are times god will speak to you and command you to give a seed who will be willing to receive but one thing i'll never do i'll never lie to you knowing that i have a need i rather come and tell you in mwezi atujajaza rent situjikaze tumalize your debt but god has been faithful so the giving details are there father bless your sons and daughters we give because we love you the bible says them that love you obey your word we give because we are in obedience with your word the different portions the 10% the fast fruit the free will giving the instructed seeds whatever they are oh god we are laying it on your altar because we know this altar has fed us this altar has empowered us and we know that there are demands in your house we are giving so that the storehouse can never lack and dear lord we pray as we connect whatever activity happens may we be partakers as paul prayed and said may my god supply all your needs according to his riches in glory i declare may the same blessing be upon every giver today in jesus mighty name and now the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen we have pastor senet's pre wedding uh, possibly if you are living you can take an envelope put the money there and put pastor senet pre wedding is that okay so that at least sisi tunabaki hapa ni pesa tunataka ukituachia pesa we are okay so god bless you and have the best week possible i have taken my 45 minutes and i want to assure you i've not even spent any more time that was my 45 minutes god bless you wana wewe ni mwema wewe ni mwema wewe ni mwema bwana wewe ni mwema wewe ni mwema wewe ni mwema bwana wewe ni mwema wewe ni mwema wewe ni mwema sema bwana